Hello everyone, I'm Governor Mara Dixon. I'm the Managing Director for Government Solutions. Now, Government Solutions is a consulting firm that assists health professionals such as doctors with product sourcing strategies, as well as the starting and the managing of medical labs. Now, I'd just like to talk to you about this book, uh, Immunohematology Principles and Practice. This is the third edition. Write a colorful um, front page for this book, and it's by Eva D. Quinley. Eva D. Quinley. So, I'm just going to show you the table of contents and what is this book all about. So, table of contents you have unit one, which is about blood and blood components. Talking about blood collection and processing for chapter one. And automated collection of blood products, chapter two. Blood components, that is the preparation, storage, and transport. So you're talking about anticoagulants, additive solutions, blood collection, sets, whole blood, red blood cells, plasma, prior precipitate, platelets, granular sites, aliquotin, irradiation of blood components, labeling requirements, all of that information. So that's unit one, blood collection and processing, automated collection of blood products and blood components. Now unit two is about genetic and immunologic principles. So you're talking about genetics in chapter 4, mitosis and meiosis, phenotypes and genotypes, inheritance, patterns, contribution of blood group genetics to the field of human genetics. All of that information. Silent genes, public and private genes. But chapter 5 is about basic immunologic principles. And then you have unit 3, which is the principles of te testing, red cell antibody detection and identification, molecular testing for blood groups in transfusion medicine, pre-transfusion testing, that's chapter 8, and you have unit 4, which is about red blood cell groups and HLA. So ABO blood group system, you have RH blood group system, other blood group systems such as the P blood group system, Lutheran, Kell, Lewis, Duffy, MNS, all those different other blood group systems. You have KID. And the whole right. You have the HLA, that's a human leukocyte antigens. And unit 5 is about transfusion practices, so transfusion therapy, and the role of a medical director in blood banking. So that deals with whole blood, red blood cells, platelets, granulocyte transfusions, plasma, cryoprecipitated antihemolytic factors, massive transfusion, pediatric transfusion. Then you have Unix, Unit 6, which deals with clinical conditions associated with immunohematology. So, adverse effects of transfusion. Talking about investigation of adverse reactions, transfusion related acute lung injury, transfusion related associated circulator overload. All of that information. That's chapter 14, adverse effects of transfusion. And chapter 15 is about transfusion transmitted disease such as viral infections, hepatitis, retrovirus, herpes virus, all of those. Chapter 16 is about hemolytic disease of the newborn, HDN. And 17 is about autoimmune hemolytic anemias. Then you have unit 
Unit 7 is about quality assurance and regulatory issues. Unit 7. So, quality assurance and safety in the new hematology lab. And some more information there. Regulations and standards for chapter 19. Chapter 20 falls under unit age, which is additional topics of interest. Information technology, pr um, process management, and uh, principles of project management. So that's the overview of the book, Immunohematology. I'm just going to go to um, unit 7, which talks about quality assurance and safety in the, in the lab in the immunohematology lab okay so this is quality assurance and safety in immunohematology So the objectives of this chapter is to define quality assurance, describe the role of quality assurance in blood center transfusion service, identify and define keywords of a successful quality assurance process, understand the value of standard operating procedures, know the components of an error management system, Describe the process for performing a quality assurance audit. Know the pro purpose of internal audits. Discuss the relationship of quality assurance to, qualify, uh, to quality control and continuous quality improvement. So that is the relationship of quality assurance to quality control and continuous quality improvement. Explain the relationship between systems, processes, inputs and outputs. Describe the problem solving process, describe the hazardous exposure risk, define the elements of a biosafety program, discuss the factors involved in waste management. So the quality improvement process is a style of management that puts quality first in all activities. So during the 1990s, increased regulatory scrutiny has played a major role in forcing changes in the way blood establishment operates. So the FDA began to, to more strictly enforce sections of the Code of Federal Regulation known as the Good Manufacturing Practices. So... Quality Assurance. Quality Assurance Program. The Quality Assurance Program is defined as the FDA's guidelines for quality assurance in blood establishments as a system designed and implemented to ensure that management manufacturing is consistently performed in such a way to yield a product of consistent quality. So quality assurance is a combination of activities Necessary for blood centers and transfusion services to ensure quality products and services for their customers. These activities include compliance with GMPs as stated in the CFR as one part of the Quality Assurance Program. Quality Assurance is part of the broader quality improvement process which ensures that quality effect continually benefits the organization and its customers. Areas of concern in the quality assurance process include personal training, policies and procedures, documentation and records, error reporting, audit, inspection, validation and quality control, supplier, qualification and labor control. So the Quality Assurance Department, each blood establishment should have a designated set of people responsible for developing, implementing, and monitoring its quality assurance activities. This Quality Assurance Department may 
consist of one or more people, this department may perform strictly quality assurance functions or it may have other responsibilities in the organization. Ideally, quality assurance personnel should report directly to top management implement at independent from operations. Quality assurance is charged into taking immediate proactive and predictive actions before systems and process go out of control. To do this, quality assurance must review and analyze data and reports to look for trends that may indicate a system going out of control. So the review and approval of procedures and policies, training program content, validation protocols and results, document control, record keeping systems, corrective action plans, suppliers, product specifications, error reports, job descriptions, lot release, performing audit, analyzing for trends monitoring corrective actions, maintaining current SOPs, providing summary reports of findings. So that's an overview of what takes place for that section. Standard operating procedures, those are SOPs. One of the most important documents in any blood bank or transfusion service is the SOP manual. The SOP manual must be up to date with procedures for all tasks to be performed in the in the collection and processing of blood component, preparation, compatibility testing and storage distribution and disrupt disposition of all blood and blood components. Each procedure should provide detailed instructions on how the part particular task is to be performed. The manufacturer's directions for use of, of reagents and equipment must be strictly followed when developing the procedures. The procedure manual must be complete accessible to all staff, strictly adhered to and understandable. So that's some information about the SOP manual, the standard operating procedures, which is important to quality, the overall quality management and quality assurance of the medical laboratory. And as you realize, this is specifically um, targeting the immunohematology department of the medical lab. So quality assurance, audit, audit is a systematic investigation to determine if an organization's actual activities and practices are being performed according to the approved and written policies and procedures. Performing audit is an important function of the quality assurance department. Audits are usually performed by staff, in the quality assurance department. However, other staff members may perform audits if they have no direct responsibilities for the process being audited or, and have been appropriately trained to do the audit. So that's all about the quality assurance, audit, inspections, facilities, equipment, process, supplier qualification, validation, a whole lot of information here that you can read once you have access to the book. So I'm just going to show you back the front page so you can know what exactly you should look for when, if you are interested in, in this book, Immunohematology, Principles and Practice, third edition by Eva, Eva D. Quinn. Alright, so thank you so much for your time. I hope your information was helpful to you and you can apply it to, to your medical laboratory. And if you need more information, you can Google Gavinomar Dixon or GovMed Solutions. You can also Google GovMedia Solutions, which would carry you back to GovMed Solutions. 
and uh, you can visit Amazon.com where we have the books Personalize Your Medical Laboratory as well as Selling Governor Mara Dixon. There's another book there called Sales in Laboratory Medicine. Or you can also visit uh, Udemy.com where we have courses available. Sales in Laboratory Medicine is one of the courses. There's another course there called Gav Media Solutions as well. And our books are also available at smashwords.com if you are interested in, in getting them from that um, location. Right, so thank you and you have a good day now.